morning, everybody. As you can see, there's a little bit of a wardrobe change. The weather has definitely cooled off. Um, it's about 50 degrees this morning. So considerable difference from a couple weeks ago for sure. Um, kind of gonna be a downward slide for the most part. Uh, the storm's supposed to blow through the next couple days and then get nice again. So we'll still see something in the 60s for sure. Uh, it's, it's not over yet, but uh, summer's near the end at this point. We're coming up on the end of August, so very common average weather, I guess, is a good way to look at it. Pretty windy today. Um, a good day to be inside the mulcher, uh, clearing brush and logs and trees and things. So that's pretty much today's project. Uh, let's see. Looks like it might get wet today, and the rain's actually okay for the mulching, keeps the dust down. It's a little hard to see through the window sometimes, but in all reality, all we're doing is turning brush and logs into toothpicks, so not, not a real uh, surgical kind of operation. And uh, keeping the dust down is really nice. Just means the filters stay cleaner, less debris blows up in the machine, uh, just, just generally better. So, let's see if going over the bridge here, get you a little view of what it's going to look like today. Yeah, just kind of an overcast day. I know the windows are so dirty on this truck. road crew guys in. Update on the fires. They're pretty much out. It's not the right way to put it. I don't think the forestry considers them out yet, but there's virtually no activity on them. They'll have crews going around doing what's called mop-up. Um, they want to get a perimeter around the fire, put out any hot spots. In the thick moss we have and cool, dry winter weather, it's not uncommon for a fire to actually hang out over the winter and then reignite in the uh, summer next spring. So it's hard to imagine a fire smoldering for six months under the snow when it's 20, 30, 40 below out or colder for six months. But the fires do do that. So forestry spends a lot of effort making sure the fires are as out as they can be before they, uh, before they leave the fire. So, and it's pretty nice with modern technology now, they can actually fly um, over it and look for hot spots with a helicopter or plane. Well, that's pretty cool technology. Um, really allows them to pinpoint a problem spot and attack it with a ground crew in these remote locations. The birch tree leaves now are looking tired, um, probably between the hot, dry summer, the daylight changing, they're just timed out. I don't know if we'll get good colors this fall or not. It's not like the Northeast. It's pretty hard to get really good colors in Alaska. Typically, it goes so fast from summer to winter, and if it rains at all, it just knocks the leaves right off. So occasionally we get a fall with some really pretty colors, yellows and reds. Don't know how good this will come out. So I may have to do a voiceover, but so road construction for this year is wrapping up. Uh, they're doing some grading on the road, watering and compacting. I would imagine trying to get it in the best shape possible for the winter. With hunting season starting here in about a week and a half, uh, the crews plan on pretty much being off the road during hunting season. There'll be a fair number of hunters coming through with trailers, uh, lots of people, stuff happening. They don't see a lot of reason to be out here trying to work while that's going on as well. It just slow down road work and slow down the access for the hunters. And the crew's been working hard all summer on this project, pretty much seven days a week, 12 hour plus days. So figure that May through uh, August, that's a long time. So they're relatively happy to have some time off as well. And then after September, uh, they'll come back in They've got 
work slated for the bridges sometime this fall or winter. I'm going to get that handled. And they're not quite sure what the next step is. They have some widening to do on the road. Um, and there's power that's going to go in along here somewhere as well. And there's the roads in the subdivision itself, in the agricultural parcels, both phase 1A, which is what our land is in, and phase 1B, which is the, uh, the next one coming up for auction, I believe starting next year. There should be some more information on that this winter. I'll try to keep everybody up to date on that. Uh, there'll be another group of parcels somewhere in the 27 range. Uh, they're gonna range from the 20 acre size all the way up to over 300. So plenty of different lots for everybody. Uh, that is a uh, sealed bid auction. So the state will have a minimum bid that you need to give and then you can bid from the minimum up to as much as you want to bid. You have to put 5% typically in the form of a, um, like a cashier's check or a credit card number in and they will open it uh, October, September, October, November and the highest bidders get the parcel. And then you go through the process of some paperwork and farm plan approval and a few things like that. Uh, anybody can bid on this land. It does not matter who you are. I believe anywhere in the world, technically, um, as long as you're in good standings with the state of Alaska. That's the big one. Um, so, a great opportunity to get some farmland. And with power coming out here and a decent road, it's not really that remote. I mean, you're on the edge of the wilderness, but not really. We have cell phone service, um, there will be power, good road, uh, the land is uh, good land. Um, so, pretty good stuff. I'll try to maybe make a video and we'll talk a little deeper about some of the obstacles a person's gonna have if they wanna come out this way. Um, coming to the third bridge. We do have some uh, new equipment that'll be here next week, it looks like. And these existing bridges are almost too narrow for it. From everything we measured, it's gonna cross it. <laughs> so maybe a little tight, but that's okay. As far as moose season goes, there's actually a fair number of moose out here. I'm not sure what the numbers are, but I haven't seen any yet this morning, but typically daily we see two or three or four. And that's a pretty good thing on this, uh, this narrow, only six mile stretch of road. Um, I'm sure they're pretty used to all the cars going by, so it's not like they're running every time they see something. They do mosey out of the way typically. Pretty much done with irrigation. Um, we'll start picking that stuff up in the next few weeks. Uh, freeze up around here is gonna be sometime between mid to the end of September, depending on um, the weather. Could go into a couple weeks into October, but you can pretty much guarantee by the last week of September, first week of October, the daytime temperatures will no longer be uh, hardly above freezing and nighttime temperatures will be below freezing. So ice will start to form at that point. And snow sometime around the same time. So we're not a heavy snow area. Um, the last year we actually got more than usual. And as we mentioned before, we're gonna stay clearing as long as we can. Um, Weather is going to be the big factor. Every, uh, every square foot we can get cleared this year gets us a jump on next year. And at this point in the game everything's about next year. From what crops we're going to plant to what land we're going to work with. Everything is prepping for next year at this point. So that's one of the challenges with farming is you're looking one and two years ahead. There's not a lot of instant gratification. Maybe other than clearing the land. That's kind of, grinding a tree up is kind of instant gratification. But knowing that down the road, that that land's gonna be useful for other things is the real reward. But again, just on this little chat, we drove 
basically from town to the farm. So, and I'm comfortably doing 40 miles an hour-ish, except for slowing down on the bridges. Oh, getting some sprinkles. Well, we could use it. I don't know if you can see in the mirror, there's still a fair bit of dust bowling up, so it's not like it's exactly wet around here. So now the next challenge is gonna be to see how, uh, how the new equipment works with the ground we've cleared. Um, is there too many sticks? Is there too many roots left? How's that gonna work up? So hey, we are back. Okay, well, I'm just gonna turn out the wind. I'm gonna go over a little bit of the morning ritual. Just got out to the farm. I need to Check the oil on the skid steer. Make sure it has fuel. Should have got fueled last night. Um, grease the skid steer, let it warm up, and uh, blow out some filters. Um, again, make sure it's ready to go for the morning. Um, and that'll take me a little time, 30 minutes or something like that, depending on what all I gotta do. And then we're ready to rock and roll. So let's get started. This would be virtually the same procedure for any piece of equipment, whether it's the mulcher, the dozer, a tractor. Whoever's going to be operating it for the day does the basic checks of lubrication, greases it, makes sure filters are clean, and it's ready to go. A lot of times when the equipment's shut down at the end of a shift, you're tired and you may not catch something. By doing it first thing in the morning, you're bound to catch problems before they become big problems. Close. It's definitely not super dirty, but it's been a while since we changed it. This is the inside one. I'm going to see if we have a new one. If not, I'll blow it out, but it's been a while. It's probably time for a new one. Side one looks like. I'll check that too. Okay, got the cabin filters replaced. Now I need to take and check the engine air filter, the main air filter for the engine itself. This machine has a two-part air filter, an outside one, and then an inside one. The outside one gets pretty dirty. The inside one we've only changed once in almost 800 hours. So the outside one does a real good job. Okay, now I'll need to take the air compressor and blow the filter out. These Caterpillar filters are very, very tough, and we can clean them over and over and over again. There does come a point you've cleaned them enough times you need to replace them. That's only been a couple of filters so far in 800 hours. So we're doing pretty good. We really try to stay up on the maintenance. It's the key to the longevity of the equipment and uh, less breakdowns. Okay, now I'm greasing the uh, equipment. There's not too many grease certs on it. I've showed that in videos in the past. Go through and hit all the grease certs. And wow, a cordless grease gun was a great investment. So, we try to grease it every eight hours. Sometimes it may go a hair longer. In this case, I think it got ran four hours yesterday or five, so it's a little premature on the greasing, but that's okay. 
grease doesn't cost that much it makes a big difference okay so we're pretty much ready to go fuel greased filters are cleaned we have the carbide teeth on i'll show those to you in a minute so we're going to sharpen teeth right now so okay i'll get this put away and we'll get wrapped up and we'll get out of here okay so well the door is down but we have the hammer teeth on the carbide teeth we were doing a job uh, where there were some rocks around so it's important to have those on and just haven't changed them yet we may be uh, maybe taking it back to town here a little later in the week and as it's cooling off the trees are changing a little the knives are a little better and we do have three sets and we'll probably use those up too but at the moment the hammer teeth are doing a decent job and that's okay let's see what the temperature's saying well it's mid 50s 54 or something starting to rain so I'm gonna get in and get to mulching I'll try to get some video of that it's kind of hard to mulch and do video at the same time but you've seen plenty of uh, Dave mulching I guess we can shut this thing off yep pretty much like this all day What you guys think, huh? Okay, it is August 19th in the evening. Well, good morning, everybody. As you can see, it is a little rainy today. That's okay, long dry summer, a little rain's kind of nice, but it is, it is wet. Uh, it's been raining a couple hours, enough to make everything uh, a little wet. So we're uh, geared up, headed out to the farm, got a few things to do today. Yeah, it's not a lot of fun in the rain, but that's okay. Get some projects that don't require dry. So anyways, let's get out there and see what we do. And cooled off a bit. It was 49 this morning, I believe. So, you think about it, what, what is that? Uh, about 17 degrees from uh, snow. So, we'll stay this way for long. It'll warm back up here tomorrow or the next day. Back in the 60s again. Well, here's a little sped up video of me digging a post hole. We do have an auger for the tractor, but I didn't want to hook it up for just one post hole. I needed to put in one post to hook a gate to on the road into the property so we can uh, gate it off when we're not there. What a joy it was digging that hole. Very easy digging. Okay, 
So, digging a hole. As you can see, there is no rocks anywhere. Remind you of fine beach sand. This makes it nice for digging holes. Very wet one today. Not overly cold. It's like 52, 53 right now. But getting a gate post in. Just gonna be a post, nothing fancy. Utilize a tree on the other side, just temporary this year, another year. We'll get a proper gate put in, but till all the dust settles, as far as construction, what's going on, don't want anything permanent because everything's fluid right now. Okay, well, I'll take some video and get it all done. Get this phone out of the rain. Okay, anybody wonder what the finished product looked like? There it is. Just a gate post. There just wasn't anything big enough on uh, the other side of the road. Go from that tree across. Okay, to the serenading of squirrels. It is August 20th. Been a good steady drizzle rain all day. Pretty hard rain this morning. It let up this afternoon a bit, now it's just steady. Not a lot today. Put the post in, showed you that. Um, did some uh, work with the dozer on one of the fields. Okay, here we are in the garden. It's still raining. The sun's trying to come out. Sunflowers are happy as sunflowers can be on a rainy day. See the corn in the background. We'll take a little look and see what it's looking like this week. Okay, so the corn's looking good. Probably next week. That's what I'm thinking. We we'll take a little sneak peek at it. You can see the kernels in there, pretty developed. Again, probably one more week we can start harvesting, so we will see. Again, just a wet one. Don't have to water though. You can see the robin right in there. I'd guess it's one of this year's chicks. And they absolutely love these cherries. You can see where they've picked them off. And it seems like they're picking them a little earlier than typical, but they absolutely go nuts over them. This was a good year this year. These are really loaded down. The birds love it. In fact, they picked most everything off up high. Well, and as far as the pumpkin goes, holy smokes, it's just taking over. And there's one right there. There's a big one in there. I don't know if you can even see it. I can't really even see it in there. It's it's large. I don't know. It's a couple foot across. Well, not a lot to this video. It was a good steady rain all day long. It's in the afternoon on Sunday. I'm going to be wrapping this one up. Didn't get as much video as I should have. Uh, with the wet, it's kind of hard to do. 
Got some new and exciting stuff that's going to happen next week. We've got a new uh, new critter coming to the farm. Yeah, critter? Animal? Well, it's green, so I don't know what kind of animal that's going to be. We'll get some more done. We're getting these fields worked up. So more on that next week. Well, from me, Adrian, Dave, and George, and of course the Collies, we appreciate you guys watching. I know this was kind of a short one. I guess we get those occasionally. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.